Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Vidhi and I like talking about all things beauty. So today I have my April favorites and fails for you guys. I have a whole mix of skincare, makeup and even some hair care thrown in. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start off with some skincare products and then we can get into some makeup because I feel like makeup is quite sizable this time around. So let's get skincare out of the way so we can spend some good time on the makeup products as well. So starting off with some cleansers. Um, I had the opportunity to try some new cleansers this time around and um, I have to say I have not been disappointed. The first one is the Haru Haru Wonder uh, Black Rice Moisture Deep Cleansing Oil. I mentioned this in a recent video where I went through all of the new K-Beauty products I tried and this was one of them. Initially when I started using it, to be honest, I didn't think it was anything special. And in all honesty, I still don't think it's anything too groundbreaking, but I have to say it's really been a pleasure to use thus far and the more i use it the more i want to reach for it and when a product like a cleansing oil which is so mundane and you know normal grows on you you know that it's really really good this cleansing oil removes my makeup very very easily it breaks it down in one go it doesn't leave a residue after i wash it off it doesn't strip my skin so it really takes all of the boxes my only issue with this was and is the scent i don't love the natural scent of the product it doesn't have any added scent it's just the scent of the ingredients i don't love that scent but given its performance and given how easy it has been to use i really do uh, recommend this product and i really do enjoy using it now another cleanser that i've really been enjoying is the prequel cleanser now prequel is not a brand that is available in canada unfortunately and it really is unfortunate because they sound like such a fantastic brand with such amazingly efficacious uh, products that I would really love to give it a go. So my friend Clancy, who travels to the US quite a bit, she was kind enough to actually decant uh, a little bit of her cleanser for me and give it to me in a small travel size. And to be honest with you, I've been using this for at least a couple of weeks now. So I've at least used this 10 times, if not more. But you need just so so little of this product to get the job done i use this both in the morning and at night as my second cleanse and it works perfectly well what really surprises me is how much this product foams it almost foams like an old school traditional uh, gel based cleanser but what's even more surprising is that despite the foaming it does not strip the skin at all it is super super gentle on the skin and i absolutely love how uh, it doesn't leave my skin stripped or dry in any way so dr sam ellis who actually owns prequel describes in some of her videos that the reason this cleanser is so gentle is because of the high amount of glycerin in it and that's the reason why it's also named as the cleanser and not the cleanser um, so yeah, I think it's an absolutely fantastic cleanser and I do think it's actually a fairly unique formulation on the market because personally I have never used a cleanser like this one. I, I've used many gentle cleansers, yes for sure, but more often than not a gentle cleanser gets offset by having sort of a low foam uh, in comparison to some other cleansers. But this doesn't compromise that at all. So if you enjoy a foamy cleanser, but you don't enjoy the fact that some of the foaming cleansers, they actually strip the skin, give this one a go. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So the next product that I've really been enjoying is the Curel Deep Moisture Spray. Now this is a mist. And of course, I love the fact that it's in an absolutely large packaging. But what I also really love is the fact that it truly, truly moisturizes my skin. Now, when I look for a face mist, I look for something that can actually moisturize my skin and not just sort of wet my skin to kickstart my skincare routine. The reason for that is that I like to use a mist to sort of prolong the time between when I wash my face to the point when I actually do my skincare routine. And 
for me a mist in that situation is just the perfect product um given that the curel mist uh, it contains glycerin and it contains allantoin and it really really moisturizes my skin i have absolutely been loving it the mist on this is also super super fine so i don't need to actually pat it in at all i can just mist it on my face and i'm good to go lately i feel like i've been on a really great streak with mists i've been enjoying this one i also had the opportunity to try the la roche posay mist which i mentioned last month around so between this and the la roche posay mist i was actually in a really good place and i i had all that i needed for mists per se but then recently we were let uh, gray actually sent me some products and they have a new mist as well and that's also another fantastic product that i've just started to use and i will report back on that so so lots of options for mists here and hopefully i'll be able to round them all up for you guys very soon so the next two products that i have are actually products that are not necessarily favorites but they're not exactly fails just yet i would say i'm still quite undecided about them but i still wanted to just um let you know what my thoughts are the first one is the naturium retinol complex serum now this i believe is sort of the milder retinol that naturium carries they also have a retinaldehyde which is probably one that i will be trying out next but speaking for this one specifically it has both retinol as well as bakuchiol in the formulation now if you recall i have been using the paula's choice clinical 1% retinol and i mentioned that that is a particularly effective particularly strong retinol product uh, on the market this one on the other hand i find that this is likely a product that is more geared towards beginners um in terms of the paula's choice one i had come to a point uh, where i was able to use it up to 3 times a week with this one also i started using it at 3 times a week just to be on the safer side because really you cannot necessarily only go by the percentages in a formula and that's something that i have learned over time so I just wanted to make sure that you know I don't do any damage to my skin and that's the reason why I started slow with it. I started with it 3 times a week. But what I found was that I wasn't seeing sort of the same level of brightness that I typically associate with using a retinol. Now, I've mentioned before that I have oily combination skin and one of the effects that I see of retinol on my skin is that it really normalizes my skin. and over time i find myself sort of reaching for an exfoliant lesser and lesser i only use exfoliants one or two times a week and if i'm using a particularly good retinol product i find that that exfoliant i reach for only maybe once a week at max with this product what i found was quite the opposite i found myself wanting to reach for an exfoliant more like two to three times a week because my skin wasn't looking quite as even and as bright as i like it to be and so that sort of leads me to believe that this is not quite as strong a product which again it was kind of expected but because the percentages are not out there i can't quite estimate where it would fall so now i've actually stepped it up a little bit and i've started to use this product up to 5 times a week and i've had no irritation so far and i'm starting to see a little bit more brightness in my skin but i've only made that switch maybe 2 weeks ago or so so i still feel like i need to use it a little bit more and only then report back but in any case i feel like if you're a beginner to retinols and if you've never used a retinol before i think this could be a great starting point but if you've been using retinols for quite some time and if you and if you've used particularly strong retinols in the past maybe this is not the best suited product for you now another product that i'm a little undecided about is the may love glow maker serum now this is a 15% vitamin c serum and this is supposed to be a formula that comes very very close to sort of the original og skin cuticle ce ferulic now So far I feel like I've been using this formula for about a month or so and what I feel like it's okay 
I don't think that it's a great product. I feel like I've used vitamin C products that are much better out there and I know that my skin reacts quite well to vitamin C. I know that I definitely see a little bit of a glow within maybe two or three weeks of use and I feel like I don't quite notice that as much but I don't want to judge it just yet because sometimes only when you go through an entire product and actually stop using it you realize that it was actually doing wonders for your skin so I still feel like this could be a great product because the ingredients are in the right place the ingredients are at the right percentages so I do want to believe that this is genuinely a good product and I've just not been perceptive enough to sort of the impact that it has had on my skin so I will report back but so far I have to say I'm not quite as impressed as I was hoping to be so that wraps up all of the skincare products I just have two body care products to go through so maybe we'll just get those done quickly and then get into makeup so the first product is the Fino premium touch hair mask now this is a Japanese hair mask that is apparently quite the rage on TikTok. Now I didn't know that, I just sort of picked it up on a whim in a K-beauty store that's near my house. And initially when I used it, I was, it was fine. It was a deep conditioner, but I wasn't super duper impressed. But one thing that I missed was that the instructions on this packaging, unfortunately, are in Japanese, so I can't read these. And that's the reason why I just used it as sort of a regular hair conditioner for one or two minutes in my hair and that's it. But recently, I thought that maybe I should actually, you know, Google search the instructions and find out how it's actually supposed to be used. Well, it turns out it's not as different but you are supposed to leave it in for about five to ten minutes before you wash it off and it's only when i actually did that and followed the instructions and left it on in my hair for five to ten minutes i realized how much better it was working i found that it really really softened my hair and Honestly, I don't think I have ever felt my hair so soft to the touch. So I was super, super impressed with this hair mask and I completely understand why it has such a big fan following. I also know that it's known as sort of the glass hair hair mask, but I don't necessarily notice any difference in sort of the shine in my hair. But I definitely do notice a difference in the softness of my hair and I can tell that they're extremely moisturized. They're also very, very easy to detangle. So that's definitely a big bonus. The only thing I will say about this product is that the scent can be quite strong. It has a floral rose scent. It fades away very quickly after you sort of dry your hair and everything but in the shower it's definitely a very very strong scent so if you're maybe sensitive to scents maybe skip this one now another body care product that i have been using is the bioderma atoderm two-in-one oil now this is supposed to be a dry body oil that soothes and enhances skin texture and is supposed to be ultra nourishing now in all honesty I really enjoy using this product. I actually use it on wet skin and then I just use a towel to dry off my skin. So I love the convenience of this product. I like the fact that I can just use this very, very quickly in the shower and it spreads much easier on wet skin. But unfortunately, I find that it just does not live up to its claims. I don't feel like it really moisturizes my skin that well. I find that probably two hours after using this my skin already feels dry and in all honesty my skin on the body is not that dry at all so if you have truly dry skin i really don't think this would be sufficient for you um another thing is that the scent is not the most pleasant it it's unscented it just has the scent of the ingredients and the ingredients kind of smell like plastic so it's not even a very pleasant scent to use in the shower so it's definitely not a product that i enjoy reaching for very often okay sorry i have one last skincare product that i missed it's the paula's choice 25 percent aha plus two percent bha exfoliant peel 
I've spoken about this before. I'm sure I've spoken about this in a monthly favorites as well as in my Sephora recommendations video. This is hands down one of my most favorite exfoliating products that I've ever tried. Typically, most exfoliating masks end up being too strong for me and they I find that they end up sensitizing my skin quite a bit. But this one, despite having the high concentrations of 25% AHA and 2% BHA, it does not irritate my skin at all. And it really leaves me with very smooth, more brighter skin that I thoroughly enjoy. I find myself reaching for this on the days that I need a little bit of added exfoliation. So maybe about once a week, instead of a leave-on exfoliant, I reach for this product and I absolutely love the outcome. I will say though that the first time you try it, maybe just patch test it because it is strong. While it does not necessarily irritate my skin, uh, if your skin is not particularly used to stronger acids, you might find this to be a little bit too much. So that finally wraps up all of the skincare and body care that I have. Now next up, I will just quickly go over some of my makeup favorites from the month. First up, I have the House Labs Concealer. Now if you watched my Sephora haul video that I posted a couple weeks back, you will see that I ended up purchasing the House Labs Concealer. And I have to say that all the hype around this concealer is absolutely 100% true. I will do a full review on this so I, I won't get into too much details about this because I feel like that will end up being a very long video but in a gist I feel like this is such a fantastic blurring concealer. It sets down to kind of like a soft matte finish and it just looks absolutely stunning on my skin. What I really, really enjoy is the way it wears through the day. My skin looks like I've just applied my makeup pretty much all day long. So even eight hours later, I feel like it's still looking absolutely perfect. And that's something that I feel like is very unique to this product. And to add to it that this product actually has good coverage. I would classify this as having medium to high coverage. So when you're in that sort of coverage category, it's very easy for a concealer to actually look cakey and not light. But this almost looks like imperceptible on the skin. It looks like my skin, but better but yet it provides that level of coverage. So all in all, I've been super, super impressed with this. And ever since I've started using this concealer, it's very, very hard for me to pick out any other base product because I just want to reach for this all the time. Again, I'll do a full dedicated video, maybe with like a wear test and everything on this concealer. But just to let you know, this is an absolutely fantastic concealer and you should not hesitate to pick this up if you were thinking about it. So the next product that I have is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow. This is in the shade Crystal Nebula and this has been a rediscovery for me this time. This is sort of a glowy base or a glowy primer that you can use under your foundation or over your foundation just to have that little hint of glow on the tops of your cheekbones or anywhere else that you might need it. Now, as I mentioned, this has been a rediscovery for me. So I've had this product for quite some time. And while I know that it's a good product, I think recently I did a YouTube video where I actually used this product. And that's where I sort of had the realization what a wonderful product this is. This is a very sheer product. It doesn't have coverage at all. But what it does is that it adds the most beautiful glow to the skin. And I find that this is the closest thing that you can get to sort of glass skin. Now, glass skin is not a very realistic idea. I think it's a very unrealistic idea and only someone who has really, really genetically perfect skin can, you know, look something close to that. But there are ways to fake it a little bit. And I feel like this is an absolutely fantastic product if you were looking for that. 
this is not sticky in any way i don't find that it adds any kind of moisture to my skin i find that it actually dries down but despite drying down it leaves that amazing glow to the skin initially i was always a uh, sort of under the impression that because the glitter in this is actually a little bit chunkier that it might look too glittery on the face but in actuality when you put it on the face or even when i have it on my hand like this you can't really tell that there's larger glitter particles in it all it looks like is a little bit of a glass shine if i had to compare this with the elf halo glow liquid filter because that's the same sort of category of products i would say that the elf one actually does carry some level of coverage if uh, you were to compare them so this is the elf product and this is the lisa eldridge product now you can see how much more glowy the lisa eldridge product is in comparison to the elf product the elf product does have a glow it does have a sheen for sure but the lisa eldridge product is absolutely on another level if you're looking for something with coverage and if you're looking to use something all over the skin i would imagine the elf halo glow is actually a great idea um because i would think that applying lisa eldridge all over the skin might not quite be feasible because you'll end up just looking oily it will be too much of glow all over i think this is the perfect product just to have on the high points of your cheeks and i think this is a great product if you're just trying to lift your skin a little bit but if you want that glass skin glow definitely the lisa eldridge product is the one for you ever since i used this in the last video i feel like i've been reaching for this almost every single day and the house labs concealer paired with the lisa eldridge uh, glow is just a match made in heaven these two together and i don't need any other makeup at all i can pretend like i have perfect skin and i'm good to go so the next makeup product that i have is the mac glow play blush in the shade blush please now this has been another rediscovery i'm actually so glad that i do these youtube videos because it's a nice way for me to actually dig into my makeup drawer and actually rediscover some of my old favorites and this uh is no different i recently did a video where i rounded up all of the blushes that i own in my collection all of the cream blushes that i own in my collection and this was one of them and from there i actually i started to reuse it every week and this shade in particular the shade blush please is an absolute pleasure to use it is such a lovely muted red pink that it just looks absolutely lovely on the skin so this is the shade you can tell that it's a very very muted shade and i don't think this would show up very well on darker skin tones but if you have a lighter skin tone i think this is an absolutely lovely everyday blush that provides just a little bit of a glow because it does have a little bit of a sheen running through it so it looks absolutely lovely on the cheeks it's also very very easy to blend out so that definitely cuts down time in your morning routine and i also find that it lasts fairly well for what it is it is a cream to powder formula so i am quite impressed that it lasts a good 6 to 7 hours before fading off the skin so if you're looking for a nice everyday blush maybe look towards the mac glow play collection they're oldies but they're definitely definitely goodies Now next up is another product that I have spoken about endlessly on here it is the Merit Solo Shadow in the shade Mid Century again I've spoken about these endlessly so I don't want to go on too long but I just absolutely love the ease of use for these shadows you could use your finger and just swipe it on to your eyelids and that's it you really don't need to be fussing with them at all you could use a brush that's usually how i use them and that's how i prefer to use them but you don't have to and once you swipe it on i find that they just set in place so you see this is already set in place and it's not moving and that's actually fantastic because usually on my eyelids most eye shadows will crease by the end of the day 
but because this one just sets in place so well i find that it doesn't crease and it just looks so fresh through the day i have a little bit of it on my eyelids today as well and i just love it i love the shade i love the way it wears and i love the fact that they are super super easy to use and i'm actually contemplating getting the shade broom which is a darker brown shade in this range and i think that would be really nice to use just at the base of my eyelids and both of them together could make a really nice soft smoky combination i just have to say that if merit does end up launching shimmers in this range i will be one of the first people to pick those up next up i actually have an eyeliner now this is an eyeliner from trish mackaboy it is the intense gel eyeliner in the shade hazelnut I mentioned this in one of my previous monthly videos and I thought it was a good product. I didn't think it was anything special. However, the more I use it, I feel like the more I absolutely love it. This is so so easy to use and it blends so easily. It's super super pigmented. Let me just quickly show you. So Please ignore that. See, that's the merit eyeshadow still not coming off completely. So you can tell that they're really, really long wearing. But anyhow, coming to this eyeliner, you can see how pigmented this is. So this is just one swipe and it's completely pigmented. I love that it's like a nice warm brown shade that you can just blend out and that's what I've done today. I have the Merit eyeshadow in mid-century all over my lid and just this eyeliner at the base of my eyelids blurred out a little bit. I just love that you can sort of create an almost smoky but wearable eye look for the daytime. And I love how easily blendable these are but despite being easily blendable, they absolutely last all day long. They also carry some fun colors like uh, a green or an emerald and a blue shade that would be really fun to pick out. I feel like those shades are always a little bit harder to wear. At least for me, I don't find myself reaching for those shades very often because I always find them a little tricky to work with. But this formula is so wonderful that I feel like I should be able to make even the more playful colors work quite well. So next up, I have two lip products here. Um, first up, I have the House Labs Lip Crayon in the shade Peach Matte. I recently did uh, a reel on Instagram that I will link below for you guys watching this lip shade. And I picked this up in my Sephora haul and I am so, so glad that I did because this is sort of a brownish peach that's a little bit orange, but it's not too orange. It's a very, very unique shade that I find works really, really well for my skin tone. So this is the shade. You can see here that it's looking a little bit more orange, but I will pop in the video where I'm swatching this in here so you can take a look as to how it looks on my lips. And I feel like when I put it on my lips, it looks like more of a brownish orange or an orangish brown, I would say. And it looks absolutely stunning. Um, the reason I reach for it so much is because of the shade. I think the shade is very unique and it's very, very wearable for an everyday look. However, if you had to ask me in terms of the formula, I have to say it's not necessarily a very unique formula. It's a very, very standard lip formula. Is it drying on my lips? Yes. Is it comfortable? Yes. It's very, very pigmented, so you end up having a very thin layer on the lips. So it's very, very comfortable for sure. I almost forget that I'm wearing it sometimes, but does it necessarily look good for a long period of time? And by that, I mean is that does it have sort of the wear of a regular lipstick where, you know, you start to see cracks in your lips after a couple hours? Yes, definitely you do start to see that. So it's a very, very normal lip formula. It's quite bare. It doesn't have any added moisture in it. So the only thing that's really special about it to me is the shade. And I would recommend it because thus far I've not really found a brown shade that looks good on my skin. Uh, one that doesn't make me look dead per se. So 
I definitely do recommend it but but all I'll say is that don't go in expecting miracles out of the formula the shade is fantastic the formula on the other hand is quite average the next lip product is actually quite the opposite i would say this is an absolutely fabulous formula and this is a new find for me one that i only found about a week ago this is the rom and blur fudge tint in the shade 06 mauvish now i know that rom and is quite well known for their lip tints but uh, as i was mentioning there's a k beauty store right next to my house and they tend to stock a lot of the rom and lip formulas and i saw this one day and just picked it up on a whim and i am just so pleasantly surprised this is not a lip tint this is more of a blurry velvet lip formula and to be honest with you i have never tried any formula that comes close to this i have tried velvet lipsticks in the past but even those i will say that they are not as thin and as blurry or as blendable as this one this one is just so unique um so let me just quickly swatch it so when i put it on you see that it actually goes on a little bit patchy if you just rub it in with your fingers you'll see that it it gives you just the most blurred looking shade on your lips that's actually what i have on my lips today so it does look quite matte but it just it's so comfortable and it has the most unique blurring finish and to me again this is very very unique I've mentioned before that I'm not a person who enjoys the traditional matte lipsticks so this for me is truly uh, an outlier again I mentioned that I'm reaching for this only because of the shade if you ask me I don't really love the formula at all but this one on the other hand I absolutely love this formula and this product almost has me wishing that I had discovered it early on because if I knew that lipsticks could also come in this kind of formula I would not hate on them as much and I would actually reach for them more often I also find that this does last quite well so if you're looking for something that has that blurred quality it lasts and it's super comfortable i think this is a great formula to check out i will say however it doesn't necessarily add any kind of moisture to the lips so my lips can get dry after a while but again because the formula is so thin i almost don't feel that it's there on my lips at all uh because i enjoyed this so much i actually picked out another shade of this and i also got a couple other uh, lip products from rom and which all of them i have to say they do not disappoint i think rom and is an absolutely fantastic brand if you're looking for some new lip products uh but yeah maybe i'll do like a swatch reel on instagram just to show you guys whatever i own from rom and so that brings me to the last product that i have which is sort of not quite a favorite but not a fail either this is the essence lash princess mascara i believe this is quite a popular mascara from essence this is a very very volumizing mascara it's one that i have on today and while yes i find that it is quite volumizing what i don't like is that it just gives the look of very very clumpy lashes and i don't enjoy that look if you particularly like that look and i know that's something that uh, some people actually do seek out they enjoy that clumpy lash look so if that's something you like maybe you will actually enjoy this this really gives that clumped up lash uh, effect uh, but personally for me i just don't enjoy that this does provide a ton of volume it's just not a formula that i enjoy a lot i just prefer a lengthening mascara instead so while this is okay it's just not necessarily for me so good product but probably for someone who's looking for volume and not necessarily just lengthening so those were all the products that i had for my april favorites and fails i would love to know what are the products that you guys are using and enjoying lately let me know in the comments below and we can chat a little bit more but apart from that i hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and thank you so much for watching i will see you next time bye bye